In this video, I'm gonna share something that is one of my favorite things to do with presentation software. And I created a video a couple years ago, maybe two or three years ago. It's actually the most viewed YouTube video that I've ever created. And it's how to create interactive diagrams in Google Slide. Now, you could take this same process and you could replicate it in PowerPoint, you could replicate it in Keynote, but the purpose is that you understand how to quickly and simply create an interactive clickable experience inside of presentation software by hyperlinking together slides, making it look like an app, making it look like a digital experience, and your kids, you, whoever is watching this, you could do this right now, and I'm gonna walk you through it, so let's get started. This is Michael Cohen, The Tech Rabbi, and welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, please consider subscribing, and if at any point in time during this video you find value, please consider giving it a like. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. We are gonna focus on something pretty exciting today. A couple years ago, I applied for my Google Certified Trainer application, and I needed to create a, just an exciting, interesting, creative video because that is what I love to do with technology. And I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if we could use Google Slides and really any presentation software, PowerPoint, Keynote, to create an interactive experience, a clickable experience. And what I discovered is, why not? Let's do it. And it's actually the most viewed YouTube video that I've ever created. And as I was running through some trainings over the past couple of weeks with different schools, intro to Google Apps for Education, advanced training, I realized there's an easier way to do this. And it's so easy that I honestly think a first or second grader with a little bit of support could do it. So anyone basically from the age of, let's say, seven to 70, this is in the ballpark, this is in the realm. And we are gonna deep dive into this right now. This now, this is is one of the coolest ways that I can see you trying to, I guess, hack Google Slides. Like, how can you just use it and maximize that creative power, creative potential? And the cool thing is, is that you could do this in PowerPoint and you could do it in Keynote as well. The power of hyperlinking objects and slides together can actually result in a interactive experience. And so what we're going to do today is we are going to create an interactive shark diagram. And I have this totally built out, totally ready to go, and I'm going to reverse engineer, backwards map, and show you exactly how you can create this. And we are gonna get started right now. What is it gonna look like? When we are finished, we are going to be able to interact with any part of this diagram and get it to engage, get it to pop up, then be able to click on the other things that we're interested in, and we're able to navigate around and learn about all of the different components of this diagram. So it's simple, it's easy to use, and hopefully we are going to get you excited, get you inspired, and then hopefully you will be creating or having your students create these interactive diagrams in no time. So how do we go about this process? So it is mission critical to plan. If your students do not plan, this will be a long, complicated process and most likely no one will wanna ever do it again. So the first thing is content is king. Content is queen. However you wanna describe it, it is supreme and if you do not have the content, it doesn't matter how beautiful, how custom, how creative it is, the content is critical. So there's a couple ways that you can go about the content. You could have the students create that content in a Google Doc, like I have here, or you could have the students putting the content at the end of the Google Slideshow in one of the slides because this is interactive, it's gonna bounce around and they'll never get to these components here. I'm gonna actually share this slide document with you in the description below so that you can make a copy and pick it apart yourself. I actually have a template where this is how you would start. You would have a title somewhere on the design. You would have instructions. I've created instructions that I think will help get the user to interact and engage with the content that's been created by the student. So clicking that label to learn about the part, you can then replace the generic words for words like, instead of just click the image a second time, click on the shark image a second time and return. Click on a new label until you've learned all there is to, all there is about this shark or about sharks or about the black tip shark, whatever it is. And then of course, place your image here and delete the box. The other thing that I did is those pop-ups, let them custom and create those, but don't reinvent the wheel. 
you could use existing shapes by going to the shape tool and then going and choosing a different shape, an arrow, a call out, whatever it is. And then of course, when you double click on that, it itself becomes a text box. Now, what you do is you preset the size and the font so that every time you create that copy and put it in the other slide, it will actually automatically go with that font. And I'm gonna show you a really cool paste feature, not just control V or right click paste. There's another way to get content from somewhere else into a new area and keep the font not where it used to look like, but what it should look like because you've decided in advance. So I have over here, Lotto Light. And then over here, when I double click on this one, I actually have a Calibri. Calibri is one, one choice and then 17 font. I could probably even make it 20 font. And what you could do to test is go to your content and look for the longest piece of information, which might be razor sharp teeth and then copy that and then paste it in here to test. Now, as I said before, you don't just control V, you actually have to paste without formatting, which means don't bring the formatting from where it just was, which is control shift V or right click if you can't remember that uh, shortcut. And then it's over here. So guess what? It's a little too big. So what I can do is I can highlight this and I can actually change the size of the font to maybe something like this. And then I know 17 is going to fit my largest or maybe 17.5. Oh, it doesn't even let me do that. Okay, fine. So it's not gonna let you do point. Oh, it did, so yeah, okay. So 17.5, you could try 18, but 18 got really close to the design over here and it just kind of cuts it off. So I think let's keep whole numbers here, 17. Now. You could delete that because it doesn't go there because that is the copy that you're gonna copy throughout your design. Now up at the top over here, you double click on that and there is another font. And this font over here, right, it's a little small. So I'm gonna actually make it bigger because I don't think that there's gonna be a word that is going to over extend beyond the right side of the shape if I go that big. And once again, the, the, the saying that, uh, that I learned growing up was measure twice, cut once. So we won't waste time. So what happened there? Oh, I press control V. You have to do control shift V and then guess what? It fits and it's good. And then you just have to make sure that you're only highlighting, it's just a technicality. Don't highlight anything extra or don't highlight down like that. So that's for the title. So the title looks good. And so I think that 24 is going to be our font size to work with. Now they just have to place and paste. And I like that because that's planning. Lots of P's, but guess what? P's are productivity, they are product, progress, and although I don't aspire to it, perfection. I think perfection is the enemy of done. We want students to just get in, get going, and get creating. But planning is mission critical. So now that I have these, I can go to the beginning of my design. Make a copy right away, or a second slide with this design over here. And then you're going to duplicate that second one here, however many slide slides you need. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There are eight different diagram labels. So I have to go two, three, four, all the way to eight. So I should finish off with slide number nine. And what I want to do is I want to actually start to create the ability to click on the different parts of the diagram, the different labels. And so I go to the shape tool, I click on the rectangle tool, and then I can make a shape, except the shape is going to block out the entire word of the label or the words of the label. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to bill color. We are going to make it transparent. We are going to go to the border color. We're going to make that transparent. And now it's invisible, but it is clickable. And that's what we want. And I already have created a whole entire, I'm gonna just control A to select everything so you see. I've already created the boxes all around this diagram. And so now 
what I can do is, is that I can organize and plan how I'm going to go about creating this. I like to go either counterclockwise or clockwise, but don't pick all around. You have to tell the students, if you're gonna start with snout, move around in a circle or move around right to left, but have some sort of order so that you know where the slides are when you start to hyperlink them together. Now I can make those shapes on the first one and I can go in and I can hyperlink together each one of these shapes to a slide. And so I'll start with the first one, which is you would click on it, you would right click, and then you could click link, you can click on it and you can move to link up here or if you're fancy, you can do command or control K. If I say to myself, I need to link this right now to a different slide and I go to slide two and then I just click off. So guess what? Didn't update it, didn't update it. So it's not gonna work, it's not gonna function. So you wanna make sure that you click on that link, you then select the slides you want and you press enter or apply. And then you can do that to slide three and four and five and six. Once again, the order doesn't matter, but you just need to know where you are going to paste your content. So you say, okay, slide eight, Gil's slide eight, I'm gonna move, and I just think that it's easier to organize if you do it in order, but really you could do it however you want. So now that you have made all these copies and you have now hyperlinked all of these different squares that are transparent border, transparent fill to the respective slide, so then you need to click on the slide. And now what you wanna do is, you actually wanna go here, you wanna select this. Now this is actually made with two separate little graphics, okay? And I'll just show you and model what it could look like if I make another design element to it. Let's say I wanna just create this piece right here that is going to be transparent, and then I'm going to, um, I'm gonna make it have, um, you know, a color like this. And purely, purely design, right, this one right here. There's no title, um, there's no text that might go there, but when I select, different shapes by just clicking and dragging and then selecting them, I can actually right click and I can group or ungroup these together. And so now they're gonna move as one piece and that's quite nice. So I can copy this and then I can paste it in all the slides. And then what I can do, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you an example of one right now. We're gonna redo uh, let's see which one we're gonna redo. We're gonna do razor sharp teeth, okay? So I'm gonna delete, I'm gonna delete this text box here. I'm gonna paste this design here. I know razor sharp teeth. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna click on my title, okay? Remembering that we just wanna, we don't wanna select extra, but we're not gonna be a stickler for that. We're gonna double click, and then we are going to paste without, there we go, we double click on it, and we get that that text in. So it's not the end of the world if they type it, paste it in, and then they have to redo it. I'm just trying to save time for you and be able to either have that template skill for you as the teacher or to just show the students that they can create these little mini templates in, the, in, in their design so that they can just paste without formatting and then they'll be ready to go. And so the other piece that you saw in some of the examples is you can actually insert a picture or you can insert a video. And you just wanna make sure that the videos apply and that they're you know, professional. So students should know that if it's you know, somebody fishing for sharks, if it's somebody fishing for sharks, you just wanna be careful that it's an appropriate, you know, appropriate design, appropriate creation, but I think that it's um, you know, just worth sharing that you can go image, you can search from the, the web, you can go in here, you can say shark teeth and you could come up with you know a really cool picture to complement that design and then you can just click on it and it's going to bring that picture in and then you can start to move these things around like that obviously not wanting to cover the part of the diagram that we're trying to showcase and then you know the students can come up 
you know, with a cool way, you know, to showcase that, you know, that design, you know, maybe it's something like that. But however it goes, however it's done, you want it to be something that um, is, is enhancing the experience, something going beyond that diagram worksheet. So once they've created that, then you have not just the hyperlink, but now everything is going to send you to that space in which you are clicking to go to. But the question is, how do you get back? So what I decided is on every subsequent slide, you want to do the following. You're going to add a shape, okay? And the shape is going to cover the entire slide. You want it to cover the entire slide. And what that will do is it will let you create a transparent overlay that just sends you to the first slide. So they click and then they engage with the new content, they click and they get back to the beginning. It's just an extra click, but it's okay and it's simple and it's quick. So you go transparent, you make the line transparent, and then you link that shape to the first slide, right? Or whatever slide, if, if the beginning slide. Sometimes you might have multiple diagrams in one Google slide file, so first slide might not work for you. But in the case for, for here, for this demo, it does click apply or enter, don't just click off. And now you can actually copy, right? Just control command C, and you can paste this in place over every single one of the subsequent slides, and it's gonna paste right over it. And then you're going to get, of course, that interactivity where you can click on the razor, sharp teeth, and then click again, and then you can click on the first dorsal fin, and you can click again, and you can click on the gills, and you can click again, and you can click on the snout, and then you can play that video, and then when you're done with that video, okay, you watch the video, it's great, so then you click and you're back at slide number one, and you are good to go. So that is the way in which you are going to create interactive slide diagrams that are super engaging, they're empowering, they're promoting creativity, but most importantly, this is a skill for students to create content that others can experience beyond your gradebook. And so I hope that you explore this. I hope you can share in the comments the success, and I hope that you can, if possible, share out some examples on social media using the hashtag EducatedByDesign or tag me, the tech rabbi. I'm so excited to see what you can create I'm really excited that you were able to watch this video. If you found value in it, please consider giving it a like. Don't forget to subscribe. And if you can share this out with a colleague that you think would benefit from it, I'm sure they would appreciate it. Till next time, hopefully you feel that you're developing that creative courage and creative capacity to create awesome things.